Well, hey y'all, happy Monday. Well, welcome back. So today I wanted to kind of jump in and catch up with you about our straw bell garden. We've had our straw bell garden going for about five months. And so I thought now would be a good time to kind of jump in and give you some feedback on our experience and the different things that we've learned, if we're gonna do it again, and um, how a straw bell garden worked out for us down here in the low desert of Arizona. So, so first of all, um, to tell you a little bit about it, um, Straw Bell Gardening is based around a book written by Joel Karsten. And so I read the book, I've chatted with a friend of mine that lived further north of here that had done Straw Bell Gardening, and it's always been something that I was very curious about. Now, there is a difference between um, straw and hay. Not that you can't use hay, but it's gonna be a lot bigger headache to use hay. So if you think about it like this, straw is what they put down for animals to use the bathroom on and hay is what animals eat so straw by nature design the reason why they use that for the stalls and animals is because it really absorbs the moisture that's in the stalls and keeps the animals happy so that's kind of the same thing that happens in the garden now i've had people from instagram say you know i see those straw bells in your yard like do you just plant right into them? And the answer is yes and no. Um, first, you have to condition your bells and get your bells ready to be planted into. And once the bells are conditioned, then yeah, you just kind of open up a space and drop your plant in there. If they're really small seeds, you can put some soil or some compost on the tops of the bells and plant your seeds there. But I'll be honest with you, a lot of what we planted in this bell were squash plants and so the squash seeds are pretty good size so a lot of the squash things um seeds and even beans i just stuck right into the bale and we had good success with them coming up so you heard me mention conditioning so that's the first thing i'm going to chat with you we're going to go back to the future back when these bells first came into our yard and that was in march we got these right at the end of um April I believe and I started conditioning them on March 3rd so we're gonna flash back there and I'm gonna chat with you about how we condition our bills what we conditioned them with and then we'll come back and I'll chat with you a little bit more about our process I told you that I had to condition these bales before I could actually plant in them because right now they're just straw and they don't have any nutritional value. Um, they're actually the product that you use to put in an animal's stall to catch their stuff as opposed to what you'd feed an animal. So what we need to take these bales through is a, com a, a decomposition process just like compost um, except in a compost bin we're using going for a slower approach to this um, so in, in in order to kind of trick our bale to go into decomposing like it would if it had sat outside in the rain for weeks and weeks and weeks is that we use a nitrogen fertilizer to speed up that decomposition so that all the organisms and microorganisms that if feed off of what's inside of the bale and turn it into compost will go into fast action. So there's pretty much two ways that you can do that. One is kind of a organic way, one's a non-organic way, and then there's kind of in the middle with, and that's what we're doing. So if you wanted to go with just, you weren't that concerned about organic, you could use just any traditional lawn fertilizer um, that ha doesn't have any herbicides in it because you don't want anything that's set up to um, feed the grass but to kill the weeds because that's going to also kill what you're trying to grow in your bale. Um, the fully organic side of things is where you'd use like blood mill or feather mill or in some cases um, really for sure cooked manure but those are all um, well not so much the feather mill and the blood mill but the manure is going to be a much slower approach to getting your bell to break down um, what i think that's kind of in the middle um, is using milorganite um, and i may or may not be saying that right milorganite is an organic product um, it just its sources are originally kind of a little gross um, 
because they come from Milwaukee and it's kind of like a sanitized organic sludge. Um, but it does the job and so we're going to be following the organic guidelines for conditioning these bales according to Joel Karsten's book and I think that's Joel's last name. But he was the original author of the Straw Bale Gardening Guide and um, so that's what we're going to be following up with. Now for some reason I just had this gut feeling that I should go ahead and get my bales a little bit wet before I go into this process um, and I'm going to show you in a second the bag of milorganite and we're going to be using um, three cups per bale of the milorganite on all the days that we add um, the fertilizer now if you're wondering about the balloons um, the reason why they're here is because um, not long after I brought the bales into the garden and that bumping is the balloons not long after I brought the bales into the garden the birds thought it was a new place for them to hang out so they have been all over the yard it's like there's a secret club that says that when you see star hay in a yard in Arizona they must have seeds out um, but there's no seeds in this and I don't mind them being in the grass, but I don't want them up on the bales. So we had the leftover balloons from my daughter's birthday party. And birds can't stand them. Um, they move constantly, which birds don't like. They have reflectiveness that birds don't like. And it feels like a big predator to birds. So that's why I've got the balloons out here is even though they're mildly annoying to me while I'm out here, they're very annoying to the birds when they're out here. And this will kind of get them trained to stay away and there's other little reflective things that you can do once you're up and going so this is just an old salsa container and i already scooped out three cuts and i i've watched the brew city gardener i believe and he's a big straw bale garden guy and he really points out that not everything has to be perfect so this is three cups but i might just start kind of using this as the line for full and if it's a little more a little less i'm not gonna freak out and then i just went and put some holes in the lid and i'm gonna go back and forth across up and down the bell and then back and forth across the bell spreading this as evenly as i can and then I'm going to water it in. And this first day is supposed to be the most important day for getting a bunch of water into your bell. And then after that, I'm going to kind of loosen up a little bit and go with what Brew City Gardener says. And if I'm messing up your name, I'm sorry about that. I'll correct it in the description. But again, he's kind of like you know water each bell for 10 seconds and you know go on about life. And so I kind of like. And the idea of being a little loose with it because sometimes I feel like if I'm really rigid with something then it you know just opens me up to more issues so I've already soaked the bells down now I'm gonna go along and I'll show you a little bit of that how I'm gonna apply that as I work on this first bale All right, so there's the first bell. I got it seasoned, if you will, with the milorganite, and now I'm gonna do the other three. I'm gonna water them in. What we're using for nitrogen is milorganite, and it's a slow release. So this kind of falls to the right of the traditional nitrogen fertilizer that you would use for your lawns. Um, the true organic um, way to do this is with like bone meal, feather meal. Some people use treated manure, but my friend Little Miss Wannabe Homesteader has had great success with using the mill organite. So this is what we're going to be using. And we're going to be using three cups for each time we treat the bell with this nitrogen. Now that you understand how we condition our bells and got them ready to plant in, I thought I'd throw in, um, you know, two little things that really kind of bugged me about the bells. Um, well, I guess three if you count the birds, um, but it didn't take long with the balloons and the birds to kind of settle down, but it took a long time. I would say maybe a month or more for the flies to calm down. Um, if you're like us and you plan to put your bales about 20 feet around away from your back door, you might wanna think twice about that because we seriously had to battle flies 
for a, a long time. So that's one thing. And then the other thing that I would say is kind of the barnyard smell um, because the smell of the bales decomposing smells a lot like you have a lot of barnyard animals. So it's funny because you think a barnyard smells that way because of the animals. But now I've come to think that maybe it's just the decomposing hay and sh or straw that's around there and that's in the stalls absorbing moisture. So those are some things to consider that wherever you're going to put your bells in your yard, be prepared for a good month of um, some flies and some smells. But anymore, I don't notice the smells. Um, once the decomposition part of the bales um, stopped, kind of that smell went away. Now I do also want to talk about um, after the conditioning happens, like you might wonder, can you immediately go plant into those bells? And the answer is no. Um, in the book, it talks about for 10 days, you kind of go through the conditioning pattern where one day you're conditioning, one day you're watering. And after that 10 day process, you go through about a three to five day process where you're adding some organic fertilizers to the bale. Now for us, by the time we were finished conditioning, it was like mid-March and it was starting to get pretty warm here. And every day we're checking the temperatures and every day it seemed like the bale was really warm. So you really don't want to plant into your bales until you can put your hand in there comfortably or until you can read on a meat um, thermometer or a compost thermometer that those temperatures are below um, 100 degrees, probably even below 90 degrees. As, um, so that's how we ended up um, starting our conditioning on March 3rd and we didn't actually plant anything into the bell until March 31st. So now this time I would say in Arizona we definitely in the spring and summertime you want to build in more time for yourself to be able to let those bales cool off. So if I was doing this again in the spring I would probably start my entire process in February. That way, I'd be fully ready to plant at the 1st of March and mid-March. So, when you think about it, planting March 31st, we didn't really even start our garden till April then, okay? But I will say that I, I've, and I've mentioned this before when I was talking about my tomatoes, that the only transplants that I've ever seen go into some type of medium and be super happy instantly was when I planted transplants directly into the straw bed. So that's the first time I've, I've watched transplants not go through a dramatic shock situation was when I, I planted them into my straw bell. So that's a thing for you to know there. And, um, and I'll also say that w locally here in Arizona, we got our straw bells um, in Glendale at the stock shop. Um, you might look at the tractor supplies if you're not in Glendale and just make some calls. And remember you're looking for um, straw. And last year when we, I mean, before the year before we even started doing this, um, the stock shop did let us know that sometimes the least expensive time to get straw is like right after Halloween because they rent out straw bales for Halloween and then when they come back they're usually loose and um, a little it's starting to rain he um, and they're a little bit looser so if you want to save some money then maybe go in November and pick up your bells and get conditioning that way um, now I want to chat with you a little bit about watering because you know, I studied um, and researched and looked up things to do with straw bell gardening for over a year. And I'm a big researcher, if you don't know that about me already. So um, before I made the investment, you know, I really dug deep into anything that I could find um, and the U of A cooperative site in my organic gardening group on Facebook. And everything that I found almost said, said, don't do straw bell gardening in Arizona because there's a much better um, things that we could do with our water resources than trying to keep these bales um, happy supposedly uh, one of the main guys in my admin group said that some master gardeners had tried it um, and that it's really kind of something better for people here in Arizona to do in the fall instead of in the summer I'm going to show you here in a minute in 
in the in a little snip of the bales that's going to show you um, what the 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 integrity of the bales looks like now. Um, and something that I'll say is I'm going to show you in that clip too about how as you're working with your bales and they're going through their decomposition process, you kind of want to keep smushing them down a little bit because they'll kind of develop little air pockets. So I want to show you in this video um, something that happened with the bales because the bales on that side of the little block are higher than the bales on this side. So let's take a look at that. What I'm trying to show you now on the bales is that, you know, the bales are about a little bit longer than my hand, whereas the bales started out, you know, probably as tall as my knee. And if we go, so this, this is what I would say is pretty good. And you know, the, the bales over time, you kind of need to keep smushing them. See how that wants to smush down there, even though there's a plant there. Now over here, where this pumpkin's at, you can see that this bale is really diminished a lot over here. And that's kind of what I was talking to the author of the book joel about because i really thought that maybe that was caused by using too much nitrogen in the beginning but um you know i'll explain to you here in a minute the gist of that you kind of heard me say in that clip a little bit that i actually reached out to joel karsten the author of straw bell gardening on instagram he follows me i follow him and i said you know i i wonder did we use too much milorganite you know did we use too much nitrogen and that kind of made our bills super decompose faster is that why maybe um some of my bills have sank down more than others um because i will say i I need to mention in my watering that every morning I kind of give the bale a little spritz as I go around, uh, mostly at the base of whatever's growing in the bale. And then twice a week when we water the garden, the bales get a heavy, heavy saturation um, via the PVC pipe system that we've got on our bales. So when I reached out to Joel, our theory was that it was because we used way too much nitrogen in the beginning. I got a lengthy answer back from Joel and he said, that it actually had to do with watering too much. Um, he said, it's almost like he knew exactly what I did too, and probably because he's wrote the book and has dealt with this for so long. But he was exactly right. He said that it's better to spritz the bales, maybe in the morning, in the evening, but by, by design, they really only should be given about a gallon of water a day because otherwise all that excess drainage drains away all the decomposed material that's inside of the bill which is all the happy stuff that makes our plants grow and thrive so that's why part of my bales are smashed down because it's gotten over watered on that side and it's just kind of slowly drained away on that corner to where the bale is only about that high compared to you know the rest of the bale being almost as tall as my hand so now when I look at that in retrospect to all of the information that I got about how this isn't a good thing for Arizona there's better use for better choices for water resources in the garden I think that's all just kind of hocus pocus I think this is totally something that is doable in Arizona and I haven't experienced even now in July you know this rapid drying of the bales that just really hasn't happened my plants the the suffering that has went on with my plants in the bale all had to do with sun or getting water on it or something like that but this bale these four bales have done incredible as far as maintaining moisture um, keeping the plants happy um, so I just want you to know that if you are researching and you see the same things that I saw out there about how this just isn't a good thing for our dry arid climate I want you to know that I actually overwatered 
Um, and it did more to hurt my bells than it did to hurt my crops, if you will. So definitely know that this is doable. Um, I know there's another guy over in the East Valley. He does a soaker system. So maybe his soaker system, just doing a little bit, a little bit each day is efficient. Um, you know me, I'm always saving money, so I'm not going to commit to soakers and blah, blah, blah until I know I'm really going to stick with something. So that's the last thing I kind of want to chat about is would we do this again and the answer is yes 100% we would totally do this again I think this is a wonderful idea for somebody that rents um, for somebody that has rocks all in their backyard and they don't want to remove the rocks I think this is a great idea for somebody that doesn't have good ground you know maybe you know that the the earth in your backyard isn't that great um, maybe you just don't want to do anything in your yard um, in Joel's book and in some of the stuff he has out on the internet I think he first originally did this on his carport you know so there's a lot of different places that you can make this straw bell garden concept work for you and so what we've decided to do is we're going to allow what's in the bales right now to go ahead and finish out we're actually going to add seven more bales we're going to put them inside inside the trellises um, and in front of the bed over there because and I'll talk about this more as we get into fall now is a time going into the fall and the winter that we can actually use the warmth in the bells to create a miniature temporary greenhouse so that's what we'll be doing on this side um, of the hoop house going through is we're gonna cover that in plastic as we get further into December and then that'll be become a really warm area for either our tomato that we still have going or seedlings that we're getting going but we definitely would do this again I definitely recommend it as something that you could try out and and as a reminder that Joel gave me and that I want to give you is that when when we call it done with these bells right here in the middle we'll put four more here and all of this straw is either going to be used as mulch on top of our containers and bags or it will go into our compost pile or as a third option that Joel reminded me of, we could always bind this up and make another smaller miniature bell and continue to use this straw until it completely disappears um, on of, of its own. So that's kind of my wrap up on straw bell gardening and you're definitely gonna see some more bells come in here. Well, I hope you enjoyed um, learning about how we put together our straw bell garden and um, everything that went into it. I hope that you're encouraged to try a straw bell garden as well and as always I hope you're having the best day ever and I'm hoping you're making the best out of this day in July where the temperatures are under 100 degrees and we'll catch up with you next week.